All right, so today I have a new pair of Air Force Ones, but this is not a regular pair of Air Force Ones. This is a pair of Air Force Ones with Nike React. So they dropped these Air Force Ones with React inside of the midsole, and I wanted to give you guys my two cents on if this one is worth buying or not. What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping. If you're trying to buy a pair of these, I will link them in the description as well, but I actually had to buy these from a UK site. Uh, I got mine from End because they were not available in the US yet. For some reason, this product was pulled from Nike's website in the US and I have no idea why. I actually reached out to them on Twitter and they never replied back, but Nike um, News actually had an article that said that this was gonna be dropping uh, last month and it just never happened. So is this a product that Nike pulled off of shelves? I have no idea if there is a reason for it, if there's a delay in shipment or what the, the deal is, but I was really intrigued by the model. So I wanted to buy a pair and do a review for you guys uh, and let you guys just know my thoughts again, simply, is it worth buying or not? Obviously that's one of those subjective things where there's lots of different factors that go into you wanting to purchase a pair of sneakers or not. For one, this one kind of looks like a traditional Air Force One, but they do a couple subtle nods to the model that I actually really like that give you like that Nike React sort of vibe. The first things first on the toe cap area, you see the little bumps that they have uh, on the React midsoles. So as an example, you can see the, the midsole there with all the crazy bumps. And then here it looks very, very similar. Normally they're just a bunch of little micro dots and then they also have that also on the back section here. Following that, they do have, as I showed you in the beginning, right here it does say Nike React. So normally the Nike Air is just right here and it's just kind of raised and rubberized uh, through the side of the shoe like this. But on the React version, it says React and then Air and then has the, uh, the line all the way around the back. And it's kind of like a harder plastic, which again is a nod to the Nike React stability uh, on the React series right here. So I like the fact that they did two little subtle things to make it known that this is a React version. The other thing is on the inside of the shoe, you can see this is a DIM6 collaboration right here. And if you don't know what the DIM6 thing is, it's just basically, I think like a creative side of Nike where they just try to explore and create different new things that are not necessarily technology driven to be groundbreaking, but just for more of mixing up different lifestyle aspects of what Nike offers. And I think they did a pretty good job with this. It looks and feels somewhat like an Air Force One, but it definitely feels like a modified version of a regular Air Force One. So there's a couple of things that I wanna dive into on this. The first things first is obviously, uh, it does say Air right here, right next to the Nike React. So you automatically are like, wait a minute, do they use Air in this? And is it Nike Air and then just a little React midsole? And this is a pair of Hydro Dip, one of my favorite pairs. Uh, that I've done and it's I've worn this one a bunch. I love this one But you can see it just has a regular like insole right here, but this one I was curious what they did so you take it out First of all, it takes some muscle because it's so thick So it's a drop-in midsole with Nike react cushioning But this is where it kind of gets fun and interesting and odd is it looked like a little gel pod back here But it's actually like a little air pouch or something. I don't know how to <laughs> describe it Like I've never seen an air unit that looks like that even the Nike Air units within the Air Force One don't look like this. They're stacks in like three or four different columns. The funniest part about this is actually it feels okay on feet. Like it actually feels pretty good. But look at the size of this midsole too. I mean, this is a thick, thick midsole. And it's all that crazy looking React on the side. And then it does say React on the top. It's definitely like a soft material. It's literally the outsole of the other shoes. So... Uh, we know that it's it's soft, it's responsive, and everything else. I mean, look at this. You can see it's pretty rad. And it feels really good on feet, in my opinion. Like, it actually feels really nice uh, underfoot. When you wear these, especially next to the regular Air Force One, it's noticeably more comfortable on feet. Like, when you squish down on the back section of the shoe here, I can definitely feel uh, a lot of cushioning on the shoe. I wouldn't say it's as good as, like, an Epic React or something like that, because that is, like, more of a freeform React. If you're going to go with an Air Force One, which is not traditionally the most comfortable pair of sneakers in this day and age. Uh, this is kind of a nice option to be able to have some nice thick cushioning on the inside of the shoe. I was honestly skeptical at first. I didn't think I would be able to notice it at all. As soon as I walked around in like the kitchen and like a hard surface, I was like, yeah, this is actually pretty good. I, uh, I didn't mind what I had on my feet at all. And I'll get more into the, the drop in cushioning in a little bit here, but I wanted to give you just a general overview of the shoe and kind of compare it to uh, the blocking of the regular Air Force One. This is the white on white. 
Um, and they did some things that looked very, very similar, but they also did some things that were a little bit different. Another nod to the React series, more like the Element Reacts. You could see they have like the double um, material on the eyelid here and then just the overall waviness here as well as the stitching down at the bottom. That's That looks like a direct correlation to the 87s. Obviously it's way more wavy than the Air Force Ones uh, right there. The middle panel right here isn't leather either. It's just softer material. It almost looks exactly like the tongue material. So it's like a breathable mesh material in here, but a little bit firmer. It has a firmer backing than the tongue does. Uh, and then you have the regular panel in the front here and then on the toe box area. It does feel like pretty cheap leather. It almost feels kind of a little bit slimy. It doesn't feel like honestly real leather. Those two panels look pretty much exactly the same as uh, the real pairs. The perforation holes actually do look a teeny bit smaller though, which is just another small random thing to note. The Nike swoosh on the side has been removed and then they have this fused material on the side instead as it swoops up to the back of the shoe. And then back here, there's another little difference. You could see it has the Nike Air uh, branding on it, but then it comes back around here and then swoops down versus just the little uh, strip right here on the regular Air Force One. So again, I think this is more of a nod to a different pair of React sneakers. The liner actually looks pretty much the same, same sort of uh, mesh material uh, on the liner. I don't know why, but the midsole to me, like on this version, feels like it's a little bit thicker like here than on the original pairs. So maybe they made it just a little bit taller than the others. I'm not really sure, but it feels that way at least to me. On the bottom, I thought it was exactly the same, but as you grab them and look a little bit closer, it's kind of like inverted. So this one has big rubber, uh, cuts right here that goes in a circular motion and then this it's like um, inverted rubber cuts right here So kind of interesting how they did that probably does cut down on the weight a little bit Just because the Air Force ones are traditionally pretty heavy and Nike react is typically lighter because the react material is actually really light the Last thing to note is the tongue on the Air Force one here is leather and it actually has a nylon trim around it and then uh, the nylon like Nike Air uh, Air Force one tag on the shoe and meanwhile this version at least the one that I got has the mesh for the tongue, freeform mesh. It doesn't have a backing like the sides. It almost feels like a black satin material, honestly. It goes around the, the, the trim of the tongue and then it does say Nike Air Air Force One in big, bold letters uh, on the tongue right there. And then on the inside, you can see the DIM6 logo, uh, as I already mentioned right there. That is kind of it. I mean, it's it looks like an Air Force One, but it's not traditionally the same thing as the regular Air Force One. It is a little bit lighter because of the, the drop-in midsole and it's a little bit more comfortable uh, than the drop-in midsole as well. So is it worth buying or not? It just depends. I mean, if you really are trying to go with a nostalgic Air Force One look with the white on whites, you can't really get a one-to-one -one representation of that with this shoe. However, if you have the intent to buy more of a traditional style shoe, but you want something more modernized, I think this is not a bad option at all. At least to me, because you have a pretty comfortable midsole in the shoe paired with the nostalgic look, sort of, of the Air Force One. I would say sort of because the other one doesn't have the big swoosh on the side and the differences that I just showed you. All in all, if you don't care about like having it look OG or anything like that, this is like a pretty good way to go. I think the price point on this is like $150. So versus like, I think the regular ones are 90 bucks, definitely an upcharge for the extra. And at that point, honestly, you could be savvy with shopping around and get some Air Force Ones and some Nike React shoes separately and get two pairs of shoes for the same price of these. So honestly, that's probably the thing I would do. I'd rather get a React Element 55 or a React Presto, even an Epic React, and then on one hand, and then on the other, I just get a regular classic um, Air Force One or even a different colorway because Nike has tons of sales on them all the time. They're not all $100. Some of them go as low as like 45 bucks on sale. Definitely worth trying to shop around if you're trying to find something that fits your budget better. But now there's a couple other things that I wanted to talk about before we end the video. The first thing is to compare it against this shoe right here, which is one of my favorite Air Force Ones. Actually, that is in the non-traditional sense. Uh, this is a Flyknit Air Force One or the Ultra Flyknit Air Force Ones. And these released a while ago and I was raving about these back in the day because it was so incredibly comfortable. It was the best version of like a uh, Flyknit adaptation on a classic silhouette in my opinion. I like these better than the Air Max 90 versions they did, the better than the Air Max 1s, better than the Air Jordan 3s or the Air Jordan 1s even. This one was the one that actually was the, the keeper for me because it, it just was uh, executed so well. I like that they took a lot of traditional elements like the back tab here and then the Nike swoosh. The other thing is they actually made it a little bit better because this is actually a really nice quality leather that they used on this, at least on this pair. And then it has the same sort of uh, shape and stuff with a toe box. Uh, and so you can see the different panels that they knitted on the shoe. So it really feels like an Air Force One. Even the tongue right here is leather like the original ones. Then you have the fly wire that comes up for the additional lockdown. And 
the midsole is actually the, the craziest part because this is like a Phylon midsole or something. It's not the really thick rubber midsole, but it looks like an Air Force One. And you can see it's like the inverted Nike Air here instead of like the one that sticks out. But this is where they changed the game a little bit. They hollowed out the sole. It was definitely way more noticeably light than the original one. Then you did keep some traditional elements with the rubberized material with the stars on the front and then the back of the shoe. So the fact that they did that um, was such a smart thing and these are super comfortable. I mean, the upper part was really comfortable. The midsole was really comfortable as well. So really the showdown is more between these two, like which one would I rather have? Um, and honestly, like just the overall execution and everything that they did with the Flyknit version, I really like this one. I'll never get rid of a pair of these. I always have a, this pair actually in my garage just for whenever I want to throw them on. I just think they look great. Personally, I'd rather get this one. They're cheaper. I'll link them both in the description for those that are interested because uh, you can get these for like 80 bucks or less online. Like they're just not like a hot commodity, but those that have them know like they're really pretty good, or at least for the most part. If you guys disagree, leave a comment. But that's one that I wanted to compare to. I will say overall, I tried both of them on side by side. The squishiness or the squishing as I call it inside of this shoe is actually a lot more felt than on this one. The final one is kind of a hard foam that's lightweight, so it doesn't have the purpose of having a soft responsive sort of ride. Like this definitely has that with the drop in um, midsole. So I think that that is something to note. If you're looking for more squishing, then this one has more squishing for the pushing than uh, the Ultras. But I like the overall feel of the Ultras and the lightweightness of the Ultras better. And something else I wanted to note, as you can see, this drop-in midsole is kind of crazy. And this isn't the first time we've seen something like this, though. We've actually seen this quite a few times in the past. I have a couple of different pairs here that have the drop-ins. This one has full-length zoom. This is from the LeBron 11s. This is from a pair of Kobe's that have the zoom on the back section here. Then we have a pair of Dunks with Lunar Lawns as well with a really thick stack. And then we also have another pair of Kobe's. This is the Lux Dunks, man. I, I love these things. I think they're so incredible. Like, the leather quality is insane. And then they threw in this giant stack of a Lunar Lawn for the midsole. Like, it was just such a great uh, match, um, in my opinion. This one was a crazy one. A lot of people hated this one, but uh, this is the LeBron. This is like my Big Bang um, inspired colorway here that I made, but th they have the full length zoom encased in the Lunar Lawn drop-in, but they were just too tight in this shoe. So actually, uh, I'd actually have to do a different drop-in because this one was so big, it just didn't fit my foot very well. Uh, because they were so snug. Look at this Kobe one too. You can see right through the bottoms down here. And this one is for the, the Flyknit Kobe joints right here that I have. And I did a Nike ID uh, way back in the day with a Sunset version. Um, but uh, but I wanted to show you guys this one. I wish I kept all my Kobe's from back in the day. Obviously um, a lot of tragedy that surrounded uh, Kobe right now. But uh, you know I have a handful of pairs of Kobe's left. I had a bunch more though. Like a ton of uh, Kobe's through the years. And uh, it is what it is. You know, I kept the ones that I really, really wanted and there got rid of some ones that I regret too. But this is another one that I Nike ID'd, a glow in the dark version, another Flyknit Kobe. And this has just a drop in Lunar Lawn. I probably wore these ones the most out of all of them out here. Uh, but drop in Lunar Lawn with no zoom at all. So they have a bunch of different versions of the drop in midsoles. And now this is at least the first time I've seen it, a drop in React uh, midsole. And, and it, it is the React one with the Nike Air on the, on the um, butt there. I don't know, again, overall functionality of this felt okay I guess on when I was walking around but I feel like this could burst pretty easily I think that I actually like this better than the Lunar Lawn ones I did try on this one and compare it directly to this one inside of the Air Force ones and I have to say the React one I felt like had more responsiveness and more squishing as I say uh, than the Lunar Lawn version so funny thing is uh, the React one is a newer like technology more engineered than the previous and I actually like it better uh, than the Lunar Lawn, which is exciting for me to say because I was such a huge fan of Lunar Lawn uh, from when it originally dropped. But it's nice to see the evolution and the changes that uh, Nike's doing. So those are some things I just wanted to show you guys, a comparison to some of the other uh, Nike Air Force One models, some of the other uh, drop-in midsoles that you guys have seen out here. What do you guys think though? Is it something that you guys are interested in buying or not? Um, I wonder again what happened to the release. I don't know why they pulled them. But it would be kind of nice to know like why these did not release in the US. As soon as I say that, though, I bet you anything, uh, they'll be available and you guys will be able to buy them. I'll link them in the description one way or the other uh, if you're trying to look for a pair. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys uh, found something interesting from the video. If you did, uh, drop a like on the video if you don't mind. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And be sure to hit the notification bells. If you are already subscribed, go back and check the notification bells to see when I post the videos. 
uh, because it's definitely always at random. I don't have a set schedule for my content. I work around my family um, and my work schedule. So it's, it's kind of like all over the place. But I appreciate you guys for stopping by and watching. We'll see you guys for some more sneaker videos very soon. Peace, guys.